Tonight, a family left broken and a community shaken after a spree of violence that ends in tragedy. Hey, welcome to WJZ at 7 o'clock tonight. I'm Rick Ritter. I'm Nicole Baker. Police just wrapped up a first date update that we have really gotten since this morning. But tonight, Still a lot of questions unanswered. So let's get right to it. Unfortunately, multiple sources have confirmed for us here at WJZ all four people involved in this abduction case out of York, Pennsylvania are dead tonight. Yeah, we've been working our sources on that. That does include former Baltimore County Police Officer Robert Vacosa, Tia Bynum, the woman allegedly helping him to evade capture, and both of Vacosa's daughters, Amina and Gianna. And we have been on the story from the very start. We have extensive live team coverage tonight, but we begin with Annie Rose Ramos, who was first on the scene out in Washington County, where this manhunt came to a terrible end. Annie Rose. Rick and Nicole, we just heard moments ago from the Maryland State Police. We understand that this was a vehicle pursuit that started in Pennsylvania and ended here in Smithsburg, Maryland. Just behind me, you can see where that all ended. There is still a very active crime scene. We understand that around 2 p.m., Bacosa's car that he stole in Cockeysville, Maryland, a Ford, that was pulled over by police and it eventually started a pursuit that ended here. It crashed into a fence behind me at that store just behind me. We are on Ringgold Pike in Smithsburg, Maryland. Now, when the police got to Vicosa's car, they found Vicosa dead, suffered from a gunshot wound. They found Tia Bynum also dead, and unfortunately, they found the two girls suffering from gunshot wound. One was already deceased. A second girl, we don't know if it was Gia or Amina, was transported, medifact, out here to, from here to a hospital where they were later pronounced dead. This is a tragic ending that you mentioned. Nobody had wanted, everybody had feared. The intention was to bring Gianna and Amina to safety. Earlier this week, we were in York. Pennsylvania, where the, their mother and released a statement. She said um, to the police in a statement, Gianna wanted to be a scientist and Amina wanted to be a veterinarian. I'm anxiously awaiting their return home. Rick and Nicole, I can tell you when we arrived here earlier this afternoon, this area was very active. There were dozens of state police, uh, law enforcement agencies, helicopters from above, but now this area is a very different scene. It's still an active investigation scene. We have seen the forensics unit arrive, the K-9 units arrive, but we know that the tragic outcome is that all four are dead. Reporting live, I'm Annie Rose Ramos for WJZ. Annie Rose, thank you. It is just a heartbreaking and stomach-turning update for us to be sharing with you tonight. WJZ investigator Mike Helgren, uh, he's been on this story from the start as well. He has. He was live in York. He's live for us tonight from Baltimore County Police Headquarters. With what led up to all of this, Mike, it's been a changing story day by day, and you've been following each development. Uh, it certainly has, uh, Rick and Nicole, and I can tell you this is, you know, of course, not what anyone wanted. Police had been pleading for days for the suspects in this case to turn those little girls over to someone and, and leave them out of this and, and make sure that they could go safely home to their mother. You heard Annie Rose reference that statement that the mother gave. And she was also a victim in this. She was held at gunpoint for hours inside of her home in York, Pennsylvania, by her estranged husband, Robert Vacosa. And police say that Sergeant Tia Bynum was involved in that plot. She also provided assistance to him. Uh, she loaned him several of her family's vehicles that he later ditched as part of his uh, his getaway and this rampage that has lasted for more than four days now. Those little girls, six and seven years old, they had such a bright future ahead of them. Their mom uh, had earlier thanked neighbors in the community and also law enforcement for their work. Uh, we did get, uh, again, uh, that update from Maryland State Police a short time ago. They're not naming names at this point. They say they still have a lot more work to do, but they talked about how this is all tied to several other incidents. Let's listen. Investigators do believe this incident is potentially related to two other incidents, one in Maryland and one in Pennsylvania. This is a complex incident, is going to take time. Our investigators are on the scene now, and again, it is an active crime scene. And that was Elena Russo with Maryland State Police. Again, she didn't name anyone's names in this. She said that there's still a lot of more investigative work that has to be done. We can tell you on Vicosa's background, uh, he was fired from the Baltimore County Police Department back in August. And Sergeant Bynum, she had her police powers revoked, and she was suspended once all this plot came to light. They were both charged with crimes in Pennsylvania. Reporting live in Towson, Mike Helgren, WJZ.
All right, Mike, thank you. And look, there's still a lot of unanswered questions tonight. A lot of that has to do with what police found when they got there on scene after that car uh, had crashed. And they said that visibility was low, of course, because it was still smoking. That's right, Paul. The car had crashed on the side of the road. They had trouble getting into the car, yeah. but they did eventually. What did they find when they got there? Well, Maryland State Police uh, are being very guarded, as Mike mentioned, with this information tonight, even con uh, not, not even confirming that that crash in Washington County was even related to the Vicosa manhunt. They hinted at it without saying so. Pennsylvania State Police apparently uh, found this car uh, heading across the state line, flagged Maryland State Police. That car crashed uh, uh, there right across the state line. Uh, we're told from Elena Russo from Maryland State Police that that crisis response team tried getting a hold of of the driver of, uh, and could not get a hold of him. Let's hear what Elena Russo had to say at that point. 2.30 p.m., our crisis negotiation team on scene made several attempts to contact the occupants of the vehicle. After receiving no response and low visibility within the vehicle because of a thick layer of smoke that was contained within the interior of the vehicle, police made entry into the passenger side. That is when they observed the driver and three backseat passengers, two of which were juveniles. All four individuals appeared to have suffered apparent gunshot wounds. Now, I asked Russo if state police or any law enforcement fired any shots. She said that was still under investigation at this point. That second child was transported to a hospital in Hagerstown where she was pronounced dead as well. We are told the next update will not be on camera, but rather a written update later this evening as state police still try to sort out this multi-state, multi-jurisdiction crime scene. For now, reporting live. At 7 the night in Pikesville for Maryland State Police Headquarters. I'm Paul Gessler for WJZ. Oh, thank you. Yeah, a lot of pieces to the story that are still missing here. But we know before this tragic end, there were allegedly several other violent crimes involving Vacosa, including a kidnapping of a man in Cockeysville. And no other news outlet has this interview tonight. It is a WJZ exclusive interview by Jessica Albert. The victim says this happened yesterday afternoon. So listen, police say Vacosa and Bynum did have a gun with them and forced the victim to drive them to several places in the Baltimore area. The victim also says that Vacosa's daughters, Amina and Gianna, were with them. I'm worried about the babies. Did you, know, you see them? Beautiful little girls. Oh, yeah. wow. How are you feeling? Very tired. <laughs> You're what? You know, and I'm just a little tired. And the victim is under police protection at this hour, so obviously he cannot talk long. The good news is, though, he is okay. So listen, if you're just joining us, we want to give you a full recap of what we know at this hour. Again, we have been following this story for you since Tuesday, breaking certainly some important details in this story. The car that former Baltimore County Police Officer Robert Vacosa was using was found in Smithburg, Washington County, around 2.30 this afternoon. Now, WJZ has since learned that he was found dead with a gunshot wound before police even got an approach to that vehicle. Multiple sources also confirmed to us that Tia Bynum and both daughters are also dead tonight. Now we are working our sources as we have been for days and we will bring you any updates as soon as we get them.